the KDF recruitment event is back, or at least that was the plan. Apparently it was causing a bunch of crashes in the game when it went live, so Cryptic had to turn it off. Hopefully once this video is up, that'll be live once again. In the meantime, since the KDF recruitment event is coming back, it seemed like a good time to do a ground build that I've been wanting to do for a while. This one is actually a melee build themed around Batleths and Klingon warriors in general. It's by no means meta, but it is a lot of fun, so I figured I'd share it with you guys. Now, one of the important things to know about melee builds is that the game really isn't well set up for them. Melee combat can feel kind of clunky and awkward, but they can be a lot of fun and do a decent amount of damage with the right kit modules. This first one I'm using is called Mud's Time Device. If my character dies while this is active, it'll return me back to the spot where I activated it with full health, so this one is very useful for survival. It's also good for lowering your kit module cooldowns, because while it's active, anytime you activate a kit module, it lowers the cooldowns of your other kit modules. This next one is called Ambush, which is kind of a must-have for pretty much anyone playing a tactical character. Activating it will give you a small buff to stealth, and a very sizable buff to bonus damage for the next 15 seconds. Next is Motion Accelerator. This is another tactical exclusive kit. It gives a sizable buff to run speed, and bonus damage to melee attacks. Since this is a melee build, that makes a lot of sense to have on this. So not only can you get to your target quicker, but you can do more damage against them. Next is Gravity Containment Unit. This is basically a large cone-shaped AoE pull which will pull enemies in range toward you. Since this is a melee build, the thinking was to be able to pull your enemies toward you so you could, you know, hit them with your Batleth. However, this kit module ends up being so powerful, most enemies you pull usually end up dead before you get a chance to stab them. This makes it a bit theme-breaking in my opinion, but honestly, too much damage is not a bad problem to have. Next is Bioessence Transfer. This one's also a little theme-breaking because it basically turns you into a vampire. You charge at an enemy, deal a decent amount of physical damage, but also get healed at the same time. So it's basically a melee attack that's also a heal. This one's more for practical reasons than anything else. It hits hard and it heals you. With a melee build, you're probably going to be taking a lot of damage in, because a lot of your enemies are going to have guns. So having a melee attack that is also a heal can actually be really helpful. The charge aspect of it too can also be really nice, because if you're far away from a boss level enemy, they'll probably survive the attack portion of this kit module, but you'll still get the heal off of them, and now you're in range to hit them with your Batleth, or any of your other kit modules. And the last kit module is Lunge. What this does is cause you to run at your target and then drop kick them like old school Captain Kirk. It does an okay amount of physical damage, and it fits the theme for the melee build, but honestly, this one's really just here because I think it's funny. Imagine you're fighting some really powerful enemy, like one of the Iconians, and you decide it's a good idea to throw your whole body at them feet first. I don't know why, but that always makes me smile, and that's why this kit module is here. Oh, I forgot to say where these are from. Mud's Time Device and the Gravity Containment Unit are from the Discovery Reputation, Bioessence Transfer is from the Infinity Lockboxes and can be found on the Exchange, and the rest are basic kit modules that you can find pretty much anywhere. The kit frame I'm using is actually just a standard tactical kit frame. There's nothing special about it except for the mods. The reason I'm using this is because it was relatively cheap on the exchange when I found it, and because it has K-Perf 2 and weapons damage, which are usually the mods I prefer for a kit frame. However, I would love to swap this out for one of those Starfleet Frontier tactical kit frames. The chance to trigger Rally Cry with this would actually be pretty helpful, but getting lockbox kit frames with desirable mods can be kind of expensive, whereas this only cost me 3 million on the exchange. For the armor, I am using Burnham CQC armor from the Discovery Reputation. This is one of the best armors in the game because it gives a 10% buff to crit chance and a 40% buff to crit severity. That is a nice amount of crit chance and severity. It also gives a small buff to run speed, which is actually going to be really helpful on a melee build, because you actually have to be close to your enemies in order to attack them. You can see I still need to upgrade this armor. One of these days I'll get around to it, but upgrading it won't change the amount of crit chance and crit severity you get, so it's not high on my to-do list. There's also an EV suit version of this armor that also gives the same buffs to crit chance, crit severity, and run speed. This EV suit also comes from the Discovery Reputation. And I just now noticed that both of these also give a small buff to physical damage. It's actually kind of nice here because most of these melee weapons deal physical damage. For the shield, I'm using the Nakul Temporal Operative Personal Shield. This is here for its time slip ability that can make me immune to damage for a small period of time, and because of its two-piece bonus with the Assault Weapon, which I am also using, which gives me another buff to crit chance and crit severity. The Assault Weapon never gets used, it is purely here for its set bonuses, that's why I haven't upgraded it. For dealing damage, you'll be reliant on your kit modules and your primary weapon. And for that, I am using the Batleth of Stovokor. This weapon is unlocked through the KDF recruitment event, which is why I wanted to do this build video for the sake of that event. This is actually one of the most powerful melee weapons in the game right now. Not only does it deal an impressive amount of damage, but it can also generate a small heal, almost like a miniature version of Bioessence Transfer. Several of the buffs that make this weapon as powerful as it is are gained through the Warrior's Blood reward track in the KDF Recruitment event. So if you're just starting a KDF recruit, this weapon will get more powerful the more you use it, because those rewards are unlocked based on the number of melee kills you've achieved with your KDF recruit. 
Here's a quick tip on getting those melee kills a little quicker than normal. Equip your whole away team with melee weapons, and play the episode Partisans from the Klingon Civil War arc. During the part where you get beamed into the arena and have to fight a bunch of creature enemies, you can get a lot of easy kills from the creatures that spawn in during this part. As long as you don't activate any of the consoles, these mobs will endlessly respawn. The reason you want your bridge officers using melee weapons also is because their kills count as your kills. The same is true with pets or any other summons, even the other companion NPCs like Martok, who will be using the Sword of Kaelas during this mission. Now, to complete the whole reward track you need to get 2500 melee kills, which is going to take you a while, like a few hours. But it's a great way to get all those melee kills easily without having to worry about other players stealing your kills. I should also probably mention that you can use this setup with any melee weapon whatsoever. Don't feel like you're restricted to using the Battleth of Stovacor. I'm just using it because it's powerful and I like it. Anyway, moving on to the devices. The first three are just combat pets. The Targ of Greythor, which can be found at the Sea Store. This is a Klingon-themed build, so of course I'm going to be using some Targs. This one is available in the Sea Store. The next is the Nanopulse War Targ. This one was an event reward, so if you don't have it now, it's going to be unavailable until it shows up in Demud's Market, whenever that will be. The cool thing about these Targ pets is that if you have both equipped, summoning one will also summon the other at the same time. So you're always going to get two Targs for one click. The next one is the Jackal Mastiff Combat Pet. KDF players can pick this up as a reward from the episode Manhunt. This one doesn't really have any special abilities, it's just here to fill a device slot and it fits the Klingon theme. Honestly, I hardly ever get a chance to use it because I'm usually prioritizing the Targs over the Mastiff. Next is the Rainbow Tribble. I often use this as a budget alternative to the gambling device. Activating it will give me a buff to crit chance. The more people on the team also using the Rainbow Tribble will increase the size of that crit chance buff. It also counts for your bridge officers, so I always equip my whole away team with one of these. The Rainbow Tribble comes from the Summer Event Store. And in the last device slot are just a stack of large hypos. Mostly just because, I mean, what else am I going to put there? For my specializations, I am using Intel Officer as my primary, and Temporal as my secondary. Mostly because that's what I use in space, and I really didn't feel like changing it. Command would probably make a better primary for a melee build, because of the buffs to run speed and your exposed chance. Temporal would make a decent primary too, then you can use Commando as your secondary. But let's be real, when running randoms, we all default to our space specializations. So I really didn't see much need in testing this with ground specializations in mind. In the personal traits, first I am using Adaptive Offense, which is a crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and then back. Aggressive, which gives me a bonus all damage buff and a buff to threat generation. Creative for the buff to my kit performance. Dolce et Decorum Est for the bonus all damage, though if I die that becomes a damage resistance buff. Lucky for the buff to crit chance and exposed chance. Physical strength for the bonus physical damage, remember most melee weapons deal physical damage. Improved warrior's blood, which gives me a crit chance and crit severity buff every time I score a melee kill. Strike team specialist, which gives me a chance to increase my crit chance. Field technician for the buff to kit readiness and bond with life, or as I like to call it, the Pokemon trait. This allows me to capture certain enemy creatures when they're at low health. I can then summon them as combat pets during battle. On this character, the one I am using is the Targ, because not only does that feed into the whole Klingon theme of the build, but the Targ specifically actually grants bonus melee damage, which further feeds into the theme of the build. For the reputation traits, I am using Deadly Aim for the crit severity buff, Lethality for the crit chance buff, Magnified Armaments for the bonus all damage, Personal Energy Amplifier for the bonus damage to my kits, and I don't actually have a 6th one unlocked on this character, but if I did, I would probably be using Omega Weapon Proficiency for the bonus melee damage. For the Duty Officers, there really isn't actually much to benefit a melee build, especially on a budget. So for now, I am using Elder Malakatan and Neil Faulkner, both give small damage buffs on both space and ground. The Elder's buff applies to all enemies, whereas Faulkner only applies against the Borg, but both of these are really only here to benefit my space builds. The next two are a pair of security officers, which have a chance to beam down additional NPCs when I use security team. And the last one is a sensor officer that debuffs enemies when I use target optics. Like with my personal traits, I don't have the sixth slot unlocked for my duty officers, but if I did, I would probably just throw in another security officer to further increase my chance at a larger security team. Now, normally with a ground build, I would test these on bug hunt, but a melee build really isn't that well suited for bug hunt, largely because of all the enemies that fly or on high ridges. Also, it's kind of a long TFO, and I just really didn't feel like doing it on this build. So instead, I parsed this on one of the old Defiri dailies, Emancipation. It's a decent testing ground, and one I don't have to set up a whole team to do. So let's go watch that, and then we'll look at the parse.
700 DPS, that's actually pretty good for a melee build. For comparison, my engineer's drone build did about 800 on this map. Most of the damage did come from Gravity Containment Unit and Bioessence Transfer, but that honestly really isn't that surprising. That's just more reason to keep using those kit modules. Lunge actually did a little bit better than I expected, and that's actually kind of funny. Now before we wrap up, I actually have another version of this build I want to show off. The build is largely the same, except this version is using the Imperial Assault set. I actually really like this set because it gives some good set bonuses, and it gave us a Nanopulse Batleth that doesn't suck. However, one of the downsides to running a Nanopulse Batleth is that they don't deal physical damage like normal melee weapons. They deal plasma damage, which means the board can adapt to it. It also means any traits you have that buff physical damage aren't going to help you, so you're probably going to want to swap those out for something that buffs melee attacks, or anything that gives any sort of general damage buff. Now, let's see how this compares to the first build. Six hundred and eighty-two DPS. It's a little less than the first one, but really it's not enough to be noticeable. Again, this is because most of your damage is coming from the gravity containment device and bioessence transfer. So yeah, that is my Klingon warrior build. I hope you found it amusing, and maybe this will help you in creating your own. Like I said, hopefully the KDF recruitment event is back up by the time this video goes live, but even if it's not, there's nothing to say you can't put this on any character. Anyway, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. It really does help the channel, and I do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.